Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton and I've been the editor since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF professional calibrator with 18 years of experience. In today's video we have our review of the Sony A90J OLED TV. Before we talk about the performance of the Sony, if you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. You can also find a link to our Patreon in the video description. And also don't forget to check out the TV forums at Europe's largest AV community on AV forums to see what owners of this TV think about it after normal use in their own homes. We publish our in-depth TV reviews, which include measurements and calibration results first on AV forums, usually a little while before our YouTube videos. So make sure you head over to check them out as they contain even more in-depth calibration details and testing. We reviewed the Sony Bravia A90J in September 2021. The Sony A90J is the company's flagship OLED TV for 2021 and features an aluminium heatsink as part of the XR OLED Contrast Pro technology, which promises higher peak brightness and deeper blacks with excellent just above black detail. The A90J introduces the Cognitive Processor XR, which Sony claims to go beyond conventional AI and is designed to replicate the way humans see and hear. Sony also states that the Cognitive Processor XR can also analyse the sound position of the signal so the sound matches precisely to the action on the screen. Add to this the excellent colour reproduction and upscaling technologies that bring all your content up to the native 4K panel resolution. The Sony also introduces the new Bravia Core streaming service and Google TV replaces Android TV as the OS and Smart TV system. The issue with the new Google TV service is the lack of UK catch-up services from all the major terrestrial broadcasters. Sony are working on this to try and resolve the issue for UK customers, but you shouldn't buy the TV on the promise of features it doesn't quite have yet. Gaming is also high on Sony's list of priorities, and the A90J comes equipped with two HDMI 2.1 ports, which does seem a little bit stingy when compared to LG who offer four on their TVs. Both slots are HDMI 2.1 48 gigabits per second and will eventually support variable refresh rate VRR after a firmware update, along with auto low latency mode ALLM, EARC and 4K at 120 frames per second. The Sony A90J is a superb OLED TV that adheres to the master series ethos of image accuracy for film and TV viewing. SDR content truly looks exceptional, with stunning accuracy for skin tones and natural looking colours. Blacks are deep yet detailed with stunning shadow detailing and the dynamic range of OLED really shines through with a cinematic flair thanks to Sony's expertise with professional image quality. The Sony Bravia X90J is also one of the best OLED TVs for HDR image quality. The new XR OLED Contrast Pro technology certainly helps Sony achieve this with brighter peak highlights which adds to the incredible dynamic range that OLED is capable of. The tone mapping is also superb with HDR10 and Dolby Vision looking sublime and the full screen brightness with a relaxed ABL circuit achieves some of the best HDR image quality we've seen from an OLED panel to date. Overall, the Sony is a step up on the former Master Series AG9 OLED and offers some of the best SDR and HDR images we've seen from OLED technology this year. It is expensive and it is also without some obvious must-have apps for those in the UK, but in terms of a home cinema TV, it certainly performs to an incredibly high standard with image accuracy and the artist's intent a high priority. If you're a movie fan looking for some of the best SDR and HDR OLED image quality, you really should demo the Bravia A90J, which comes highly recommended. Looking at the grayscale first, we have a decent track towards the standards, but with just a little too much blue in the brighter areas of the image, along with a deficit of red. Our Delta E errors are decent and for the most part are under the visible threshold of 3, but there are errors higher than this at the brightest part of the scale. 
This translates into a slightly blue tint to on-screen images, but it's nothing that is distracting and most normal users would never notice it. Gamma also tracks well to BT1886 with just a few small deviations that are again not visible with actual viewing content. The Rec 709 color gamut results are also good, but the white point towards blue has pulled the primary and secondary saturation points slightly over towards blue, moving them from where they should be in the gamut. Again, this doesn't translate to any obvious visible errors with actual viewing content, and even those with trained eyes would struggle to see any real issues. By correcting the white point, we should have a colour gamut that falls back towards where the saturation points should ideally be. As you can see with the grayscale results, we managed to hit reference levels of accuracy. The track was deadly flat, with Delta E errors well under the visible threshold of 3, with an average of 0.5. Gamma is also tracking BT1886, and overall there are no visible errors within the image, which is extremely accurate to the standards. Moving to the Rec 709 color gamut, and we also have a very good result here with just very minor errors seen within the saturation tracking chart. These errors are again well below the visible threshold, and with actual film and TV content, the A90J is very accurate indeed. Overall, it's an excellent result, and the Sony can produce incredibly accurate SDR images. As always, we measured the peak brightness at various window sizes to see just how well the A90J performs. This was in the most accurate HDR picture preset which is custom and the HDR tone mapping was set to gradient preferred which follows the PQ EOTF standards correctly. For 2%, 5% and the industry standard 10% window results, we measured approximately 750 nits as the peak brightness with a full frame, 100% white screen the A90J measured 172 nits. These are excellent results for an OLED panel. Looking at the PQ EOTF, we can see that it does track correctly with the correct brightness. However, it does start to roll off around about 400 nits up, and this moves over to the peak of 750 nits. It employs the same tone mapping curve and tracking for 1000 and 4000 nit content and does so in a way that retains the peak highlight details, which when added to the extra brightness really does make HDR images pop. Moving to the wide colour gamut DCI-P3 results, we can see that the saturation tracking is very good indeed, with just green falling a little bit short of the full gamut size at 100% saturation, and red 50% saturation is slightly too saturated. Other than those small issues, the result of the gamut coverage is very good indeed for wide colour reproduction. We measured BT2020 at 71% XY and 73% UV, with P3 coming in at 98% XY and 98% UV. The Sony is the high-end Master Series OLED TV for 2021 and it offers new image processing and of course better brightness for more realistic and accurate HDR picture quality. The new panel has a laminate aluminium heatsink as part of the XR OLED technology and this helps dissipate heat away from the panel while boosting the brightness capabilities. Added to this is a change of how the pixel emits light, and where other manufacturers use the white pixel to achieve this on its own, the Sony approach uses the white, red, green and blue pixels to increase the brightness of the colours at the same time. This helps keep the colours looking purer without washout at higher peak brightness levels. Looking at the panel uniformity, and we didn't notice any major issues with the A90J at all brightness levels. The 5% brightness test did not show any obvious banding problems, and nothing was visible with normal content, including dark scenes in a dark environment. All other brightness levels were clean without any visible banding or dirty screen effect, including 100% brightness, which was also free from any obvious colour tinting. The video processing on the A90J is also top class, as you would expect from a Sony TV, and the new process or certainly helps out here. The motion is excellent with superb 24 frames per second performance with motion flow switched off and the correct 5.5 pull down is employed for film content with no induced judder. 
Upscaling is also first class, displaying excellent image quality with clear edges and superb detail. Edges look solid and free from rigging, with reality creation switched off, and when switched on it does add a little bit more edge enhancement, which gives the image a slightly digital but incredibly sharp appearance. We wouldn't recommend this obviously. With HDR TV and movie content, the A90J produces an exceptionally accurate image with superb dynamic range and natural lifelike colours. Skin tones look realistic and the Sony is capable of incredibly cinematic images. If you're a film fan looking for an incredibly cinematic experience with SDR movie content on Blu-ray disc or streaming, the A90J is an excellent choice to make. Moving to HDR10, HLG Hybrid Log Gamma and Dolby Vision High Dynamic Range Systems, we were greeted with one of the best HDR images from an OLED on the market today. Everything that makes the SDR performance outstanding is also true when it comes to the HDR sources, with superb dynamic range, deep blacks and stunning shadow details, to realistic colours and skin tones. The extra peak brightness, especially with larger areas of bright white, looks impactful with superb detail retrieval in the peak highlights. In our comparison, one surprise was that the A90J was bettered when it comes to peak brightness by the Panasonic JZ1500, which also has a more natural and accurate white point out of the box when compared to the Sony and its Master Series white point, which is slightly blue. Skin tones look a little bit more realistic as a result with a redder hue to faces on the JZ1500 than the Sony, which in comparison looks a little bit pale and slightly cyan as a result. In almost all other aspects, both sets were very close to each other for colour accuracy and cinematic prowess, and we'll have a more detailed comparison video coming soon. Moving to comparisons with the LG G1 and C1, it was again the white point out of the box which gave the Sony away and had the LGs looking a little bit more accurate in the filmmaker mode with its D65 white point. Peak brightness on the Sony A90J and the LG G1 were very similar and even with slight differences in the tone mapping employed, each set handled HDR10 content incredibly well with excellent dynamics and accurate looking colours and images. The Sony is just slightly better with the reproduction of colour within HDR content and nitpicking again, it was a performance trait I preferred with the Sony. The C1 managed to perform incredibly well against the A90J and the G1 with just a slight decrease in overall peak brightness, especially with full screen white, letting itself down slightly in the side-by-side -side testing, but again I doubt it would be as big an issue if you saw the TV in isolation. We go into far more detail in the full review, which you can read at avforums.com. The Sony Bravia XR A90J is a very good looking OLED TV with a simple minimalist design and dual use stand feet. Of course, being a Sony OLED, the screen is the speaker, so the front of the panel has a clean design with just a small Sony logo at the bottom left hand side and it's almost bezel-less free surface. The connections are on the rear and are sideways and downwards facing. To the side are speaker connections to use as a centre speaker in a home cinema system and below these is a CI slot. We then have two 3.5mm jacks, one for AV breakout cables for legacy connections or the S centre speaker and below this is a headphone output. There are also two USB slots, an HDMI 2.0B port and a mic on off switch. The downward facing inputs include a USB 3.0 slot, one HDMI 2.0B port and two HDMI 2.1 48 gigabits per second slots with a digital out, a LAN and two satellite and one RF antenna port. Sony carries over the new remote design from last year with the premium models with a long slick metal face front and a textured plastic rear that gives a very high end feel. It sits neatly in the hand and all the major buttons are within easy thumb reach when it's held in one hand. It's also backlit which helps with late night viewing in a dark room and overall the remote is very good and it fits with the design and the price point of the A90J. Don't forget to head over to avforums.com to read our full in-depth review of the Sony A90J and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.